Hey Edgeforians, um, this video is going to show you what online test proctoring looks like from the teacher perspective. So again, once you have um, set up student passwords, you have built a test that you are ready to administer online, you have made sure that under the administration tab you have it set up to do online testing again you don't have to do anything there except for maybe preview the test and make sure your administration dates are correct um, and then turn on the calculator if you choose to do so for a math or science assessment um, and then once those things are done the test and the test is in an active state the test is available to be administered online by teachers and we're going to look at what those proctor that proctoring screen looks like um, so if from the application home screen you just click on aware it takes you it defaults you to the analyze tab from here i'm going to click on test available so again this is not under the assessment tab it's under the analyze tab it's under test available and I can see I have my list of assessments here that are available for online test proctoring. This is also consequently where you go to print answer docs. This is also where you go to enter answers for, or enter scores for short answer um, questions. Um, so all that can be done from this test available screen. So if I'm going to administer a test for online test proctoring, um, I'm going to, just click that real quick sorry I'm gonna click on this button and notice that it turns to a check mark which means it's available for online test proctoring um, once I have turned it on for online test proctoring I am going to go to the online test proctoring tab I can then select the students or the classes of students that I want to make the test available for um, so during this time period, depending on how you're administering tests, you may make it available for all of your classes and leave it open for a couple of days. Um, or you may, you know, if it's during the regular, during a normal school um, day, I would turn it on and off per class period, you know, as the kids entered and exit exited the room. Um, and so again, I can select all students in the class and then I can make the test unavailable for students who you know are absent that day on a field trip whatever so just under normal circumstances you can make it available for the whole class and then unselect students who aren't available to take the test this is also where I can manage my embedded supports so if a student um, has embedded supports available and your special education staff or Edgeforia managers have managed those, you will see that they default as available for the students. So text-to-speech and spelling assistance would be available for Colby. Um, I can also turn those on at any time for any other student that I feel like need text-to-speech or spelling assistance. Um, you know, I can turn those on and see if they perform better with or without them. I can also, as the teacher, turn them off for a student who normally has them and see how the student performs without them. So when I'm looking at data, then I can look at Colby's performance with text-to-speech and Colby's performance without text-to-speech, um, or oral administration basically is what that is, and see if he is performing um, at the same level or a similar level, or if this text-to-speech or oral assessment actually you know benefits Colby in some way so I can always manage them right here for this individual assessment on this proctoring screen so no that's available so for this test let me turn it I'll leave it off for Colby for now um, and then once I hit this play button essentially is what that looks like it's a start button I can see that the test is now available for these students to log in and take the test. One thing you have right here is the for submit button. So let's say um, you know you told the kids you have 30 minutes to take this test and it's been 45 minutes and I still have kids who haven't finished the test I can force submit or if a student logs out and doesn't submit their test um, you can force submit. You can also so let's say I force submit Colby's test um, or Colby has submitted his test but he hasn't finished the test so instead of just exiting the test and logging out um, Colby actually hit submit 
instead, but he wasn't finished, I can also, as the teacher, just reopen Colby's test. Um, so from here, I can see kind of the status of the test. So not started. Um, once Colby logs in, it will say, you know, started. And then once Colby has submitted his test, um, you know, it will say completed. And so I can kind of get an idea of the status of my students as they're taking the test. Um, right here from my proctoring screen, I can see who's logged in and started and who has not. Um, once I'm finished or that class period is over on a normal day, you would say the class period's over, um, I can hit stop and the test is now unavailable for these students. So it's only available when, during the window that I've made it available for the students. So again, I can start it to make it available and I can stop it to make it unavailable.